Hello family, my name is Chris, I am your Home Gamer Dad, and welcome back to my next session of Final Girl. This time we're going to be focusing on the feature film Slaughter in the Groves, taking the killer, the location, and one of the final girls that you would find within this set here, and testing our luck uh, against them, and hoping we come out on top this time. As per usual, each feature film does come with one killer in it, this time it is Inken Yamba, an original creation for Final Girl. There's really nothing you can kind of click this to in terms of like horror movies or icons or anything along that ways. But really what this is, it's he's originally started out as a normal guy, but then he was infused by the power of the gods to take vengeance on all of those that have come in and desecrated sacred and holy lands. Hence, slaughter in the groves. This whole big thing is about the sacred groves, which is the location that comes within this. All of these tourists and the outsiders and everything are coming into these holy lands, messing them up, disrespecting him and all that other stuff. And Inkenyama is there in order to avenge the gods and take back their land through blood sacrifices. As far as the two final girls, you're going to find Adelaide in this, which is the girl that I have chosen for this particular session, along with Barbara. And Barbara is actually on the back here. Both of the final girls in this are excellent characters to use for any particular circumstance, but Adelaide, as I explain a little bit later, is the one that's made for this in particular. She has a special ability on the back of her card that kind of plays into the uh, special rules that you'll find for Inkanyamba and the Sacred Groves. Nothing else needs to be explained here. You know how this works and everything. Let's jump on down to the table and start this matchup. Let's take our final girl here and clean up the mess that all of these terrible, terrible tourists leave behind. And I just got back from a Disney vacation, so I feel her pain. I really do. In Kenyamba versus Adelaide in the Sacred Groves. All those who desecrate the sacred lands of the sacred grove shall feel the wrath of the gods. Here we go, everybody, into this particular run of Final Girl, as I explained, with Inkanyamba in the sacred grounds and using Adelaide uh, as our final girl. So as per normal, we're going to do the full setup here. I mean, I did most of it already, as you can see, but I'm going to go and explain what makes Inkanyamba like uh, original, what he brings to the table what makes the Sacred Grounds original, and then uh, talk about Adelaide a little bit. So let's just go ahead and start with setting up Inkanyama and talking about him. Honestly, I might as well just start just talking about both of these Wrath cards right here, because the Sacred Grove comes with Divine Wrath, and Inkanyama comes with Killer Wrath. So if you're just using one or the other, you know, you'll only use this if you're using Sacred Grounds, you'll only use this if you're using Inkanyama, and because the two of them are together, you got a lot of Wrath to deal with. Basically what this is, is this a... Uh, progressive board of very bad things that happen as you go through the game and right now everything starts at level two and when you ever see something that says unleash divine wrath or killer wrath you do whatever it is that it says you know wherever level you're on uh, so for example if I was at here level one and I got unleashed killer wrath it says increase wrath by one goes up one so it's the yellow lightning bolt and the red lightning bolt. There are things that you can use in order to reduce these as you go along. And then most of the times you'll be able to choose between the yellow or the red, depending on what you have. But that's really it for Inkanyamba. Whenever you use him, he's just going to use the killer wrath board here. And that's just what makes him different from all of the others. He's going to do all kinds of crazy stuff as usual with his finale cards and his dark powers, which we're going to set up right now. And then uh, as he kills people and as uh, terror cards are uh, revealed and whatnot, you will go ahead and increase his Divine Wrath. In addition to that, I'm sorry, his Killer Wrath. In addition to that, up here, you can actually see on top his Killer Ability every turn is if the Killer Wrath gauge is at 1 or 2, you're going to increase it by 1. So it's always going to go up 1 if it's at its lowest setting, and then he's just going to stand where he is and kill whoever's in his space. All right, let's go ahead and put his bottom part down, his dark power. I do have the epics mixed into here, so we'll see what we get. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the health here. I actually have a D10 this time, so we have nine health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I roll a 10 here, I will just re-roll it. I have a six, so one, two, three, four, five, 
Six goes here for Inkanyamba. We'll move this down and we will roll and we will get, well, come back here. Actually a d12. I did thought I grabbed a d10, but that's okay. Yeah, that's whatever. I rolled a seven anyway. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This goes to Adelaide. So there's our final health for the game. Uh, the terror gauge starts at four and let's go ahead and set up the rest. Take that away, and as far as the Sacred Groves go, there are three new spots on the map that we haven't seen before. These are Sacred Sites. Generally, this means that whenever there are victims standing in these sites, it's going to increase the Divine Wrath. It, the gods do not like people basically being tourists in these areas, messing them up, saying that, oh, look at all this garbage that we're going to throw here, or we're going to do all kinds of crazy, you know, take a selfie if we're standing on, like, a high pillar or something like that, you know, anything to disrespect the gods that these particular sacred lands are supposed to represent. So the more victims that are on here, the higher the Divine Wrath is going to get. And, of course, there are uh, cards that relate to the uh, sacred grounds, moving victims in and out of it and everything. So, let's see where everybody starts. So, our setup is... Uh, Mob of Taurus. Oh, that's a good one. Look at that, everybody right in the middle. And then let's just go ahead and start filling. So, there are six Taurus slash victims slash meatbags right in the middle here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's just... That's just begging for Ikenyama to come and start slaughtering them. We got one here, one here, kind of like surrounding it, actually. One here. The good thing is, is that there's only two victims in total in the sacred grounds. There are no victims in uh, the Holy Groves over here. I'm going to move this down here. Just to... in, in Kenyamba, it's going to go down here into the corner, and Adelaide's going to go into this spot right here. I'm going to explain what this is in a moment. I just wanted to set up all the victims here, uh, get that ready to go, and then we can actually talk about what is this exactly. So this is an extension for the Bloodlust Tracker. Whenever you use the Sacred Grove, you're going to line this up with the very bottom point for whatever killer you're using. And as the Bloodlust Tracker goes up, it's actually going to activate these spots here along with anything that would happen to be here. Now, Inkanyamba doesn't have anything activated on this side, which is actually pretty crazy. It's only the Dark Power. But as this goes up, the Sacred Grove stuff is going to activate. So... This is really what makes Sacred Grove difficult because this is going to increase the Divine Wrath like crazy and then it's going to unleash it quite a bit. I, I gotta admit, this is a tough one. I don't like that that's like that. Let's move that down just so you guys can see it a little better. I'll do my event in a minute. Let's go ahead and uh, take the Terror deck here. We'll shuffle this up, throw down our 10 cards just so you guys can see that there's a shuffle, a split, and... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's our terror deck ready to go. You need ten cards mixed in from the terror cards from Sacred Grove and Kamiyamba. I'm going to move the item deck over here because we're going to talk about Adelaide. Adelaide needs five victims rescued in order to be able to flip her over. She does have a very good power that does relate to the Divine and Killer Wrath tracks, which is kind of the reason why I chose her for this, the actual final girl that works in conjunction with either the killer and or the uh, space that we're in. Uh, she does come with the set, I believe I mentioned earlier. And then you can get, you know, lowering the horror gauge, uh, gaining more time, or moving a space. Not so bad. Pretty good. Uh, I wish this was maybe a double horror drop or something like that, but just, just something in order to really help out uh, maybe get more cards into her hand. But it's pretty good. Getting these five victims, ah, there's no guarantee I'm going to get it, but here's hoping. As far as her special weapon goes, Adelaide's Bat and Shield. Uh, this is going to get shuffled into the item deck. Unfortunately, I never actually beat... I have yet to beat this, uh, I, I believe I've mentioned before. Um, so, technically, I have not earned this, but it, you know what? Just for the sake of having fun and everything, it's going to get shuffled into the deck regardless. Uh, what is this over here, you may be asking as well. This is an extension to the uh, finale as well. This will be whenever you play with Sacred Grove, so no matter what killer you have, whenever you uh, like reveal the finale, you're going to attach this to the back end of the killer's action. They will always take this ability. But for right now, we don't have to worry about it because we don't have any finale, so I'm just going to take this and move to the side. 
And now we're going to go ahead and get the item deck set up. So as per usual, we're going to go ahead and deal out 11 cards, and then I'm going to mix the bat come back here uh, into it. And we will be able to get this rolling. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Shuffle this in for 12 cards. This is good. This is good. As per usual, you're going to do three face down. And then whatever the top one is for the item deck will be face up. Our three sections are the welcome center. The Lost and Found, and the Ground Keeper's Shed. Those are the three areas uh, on the map that will house items. Okay, three items. First one up here is Pepper Spray. If the killer's in your space, you may discard this immediately to end the killer's phase. Ignore their remaining movement, yada, yada, yada. We've seen... I, I don't know if we've seen that before, but that's in other uh, uh, feature films. Next, we have... First aid kit, we've seen that before. Every time you use an action to recover health, they cover an additional one. Again, they need to fill out the item decks on these, so they use items from other feature films in here. So you're going to see a lot of cross crossover like that. And finally, we have, ooh, the whip. This is something for here. If you damage an enemy with a whip, you may move them one space. So we've finally got, like, an actual weapon weapon to uh, equip to her. Not a bad thing to possibly go for. Unfortunately, she's all the way on the opposite side. There's the groundkeeper's shed. The welcome center is right here. Might be able to get that pepper spray and get that victim out of here as fast as possible. But, you know, that's for when we actually begin. Uh, let's go ahead and flip our event and then grab our cards. Got the event. Shuffle it up like so. There's some really nasty events. and All the events are generally nasty, but in this one, I was reading through some of them. They're, they're crazy, let me tell you. And we get... Okay, ooh, the tour guide. Uh, and, do, 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 do. and if you look to your right, you'll see, oh my god, that's horrifying. Perhaps we should take a different route. The victim closest to you is the tour guide. Once per turn, whenever you move at least one space, you may move an additional space as long as the tour guide remains with you for the entire movement. If the tour guide is killed, increase the divine wrath by six. Ooh, okay. So the victim closest to me is this one right here in the Welcome Center. As much as I want to say I could love to take advantage of that extra movement by running around and collecting people, I'm probably just going to get rid of you first because, um, what is it, one, two movement would be fine because I can go here and then two, something like that? No, they have to be with me for the entire movement. So one movement turns into two, two turns into three. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can run around and try to grab uh, at least this person out of there as well or this one. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's head on over to the cards, and um, you can actually see a new card added. Over here in the tableau, we have ourselves, our cards all set up, and you may notice something new here, Atonement. This comes with the feature film that we're using right here, and you're only going to ever use this if you're going up against Inkanyamba and or the Sacred Groves, because Atonement decreases the wraths of both gauges. It's all or. You need to do the uh, Divine Wrath or the Killer Wrath. It's your choice. Uh, but the cool thing about Atonement is it actually has a three-star option. So the more dice are rolled, the better it is. And if you hit three stars or more, you can decrease the uh, Wrath Gauge down to one. So if it's up high, you can bring it down immediately. But even still, a two going down by half is great, and then one is only about one. But these are something you're going to want to get into your hands early in order to make sure you keep the Divine Wrath under control. At least that's how I play it. Uh, may not be the best strategy of time to time, because again, I haven't won this, but hey, you know what? This might be my time, so let's grab our cards, and here we go. All right, as per usual, we got ourselves our starting six cards, and I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, do I just focus first? You know, I, I always like to start off with a nice focus, just to be sure. Uh, hopefully gain uh, some uh, time, and then lower that uh, gauge down. I'm also going to be rolling in this over here just to make it a little easier and not, like, roll all over things. Hey, look at that. I got myself a star right off the hop. So we'll lose the time. This will go down one. That's good. Do we focus again? Yeah, sure. Let's just focus again. Bring it down a little bit more. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. We got another success. Oh, good. Not bad. Down one. Down one. Beautiful. And now we're going to start walking. So if we can get that tour guide and start moving around, maybe we'll be able to kind of gain some victims uh, really quickly, or at least uh, save them faster. So we get two. So let's go ahead and do that. 
we get another standard success. Very nice. So we lose a time, and then we're going to go in here. So now, if I move, I will be able to gain the full complement of the move uh, plus one with the tour guide. And I actually think I'm going to end it right here. I'm not going to go any further. Uh, I want to save uh, my walk for next, and I'm going to use the time I have left in order to be able to get myself a sprint card. So with three to buy, I'm going to take the sprint, which is two, and I'm going to take a close call for one. So that is three time right there. And we'll put back those uh, zeros for the next round. Reset this up to six. Now we're on the killer phase. So first thing first, if the killer wrath is at one or two, increase it by one. It always starts at two, so it will go up to level three. And then Inkan Yamba just swings his sticks around, his, his scythe or... I don't even know what these weapons are. These are really nasty things, but there's nobody there for him to hit. So with that said and done, let's go ahead and flip the first terror card. Oh, these are the worst. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. Uh, if there are no victims on the board, there are. Uh, he's coming and there's nothing we can do. Increase the terror gauge by one. He focuses on the closest victim and moves there. All right. All right so we're just going to move this up to three. So I'm glad that I lowered it. So now with the way that this works, he can only go out here. So he has a move of two, so he's going to go there. And it's one, two, or one, two. He's closer to either one of these two victims. I'm going to move him up one. I'm going to say he smells this guy by himself on his lonesome first. So that's one, two. There's nothing there for him to kill. We are still okay. Uh, that's that's the killer phase. Whew, all right, that, that's not bad. Panic phase, victim is killed. No victim is killed, that's good. Upkeep phase, uh, no reveal, no need to bring any items. Back up to action phase for the next round. All right, like I said, we're just going to go ahead and sprint it. If I can do, if I get a double success, I can move four spaces in one turn, which is insane. So let's see what we can do. Come on, come on. Even one success is fine. So I got, okay. So I got one success, which would be three spaces because I have the tour guide. But I do have this. Let me, let me do a count. Hold on. No, I'm not going to discard anything because the tour guide needs to be with me for the entire length of the movement. And I can only take two victims with me at a time. So I can do one, two, and grab you and go back for three. So that's, that's good right there. So we're going to leave it like that. So I move three spaces with sprint. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to walk. And we're going to see if we can get a, a good run that way. Oh, that uh, sprint cost me one time. So we're at five. And now, um, let's do it again. Even if I get... Uh, okay, see, there we go. I'm glad that I didn't do what I did then. That's perfect. So I'm going to take my short rest and my weak, uh, my short rest and my weak attack. We're going to go ahead and... Oh, I hate that I hit this so much. I'm sorry. Move that down. Um, short, short rest and my weak attack. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn that into a success, which is great. So now I can move two spaces and we're going to go one two, and I'm actually going to release Yay! both of them immediately uh, into the world and get them out of here before anything. And I know I lose my extra movement then, but this is, I think, the best thing to do right now. I have four time, but with Adeline, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put one victim here for the move one, and then I have my special victim here. Let's go ahead and just put that there and reduce the horror gauge by one, because I want to try to get to three... Um, three dice as soon as possible. So we'll go down one, and then we're going to move to the Welcome Center. This way I can possibly start searching for items next turn, because I'm already there. Speaking of which, we're going to go ahead and end that action phase. We are down to four time. Let's head on over to the Tableau and see what we can buy. All right, so all the zeros come back to my hand, which is good. Uh, the Divine Wrath and the, the Wrath Gauges haven't really gone up that much, so that's all right for right now. Um, I do have... Uh, four to buy. I do want to search where I am, so I'll take that. You know, I'm going to take an Atoma just to have it in my hand just in case, because they're worth two apiece. So there we go. And we'll put this right here, ready to go for the next round. Back up to six. Killer phase. Killer doesn't do anything, and the Divine Wrath does not go up because it is at three. So let's just go right to the Terror card. I have a bad feeling for that victim. Very, very bad feeling. No one will notice if I break off these pretty... Oh, come on! Uh, all right, so increase Divine Wrath based on the number of victims in sacred spaces, which is one, which is only one. That's great. So this would only go up one. 
then it's unleash divine wrath. So that means that according to this, our terror gauge goes up by one. So we'll go here. All right, next, place two new victims in the Holy Grove, which is right here. All right, and then all victims adjacent to the Holy Grove move there, which is just you. So there's three people now in the Holy Grove, which is very bad because that means the divine wrath can raise really quickly. But that wasn't as bad as it could be. You could have, you, we could have started with this and then the divine wrath have gone up by three and then problems would have immediately happened. So, all right, not bad, pretty good. Let's see what we can find. Man, I am two off from uh, two dice. So I'm going to go ahead and try a focus here in order to lower it down to a uh, horror gauge of one. Uh, all right, so we got one success. That's cool. So that'll go down and I'll go here. I'm so close. I might as well just do it. Let's go. Let's focus up a second time. I do have a close call, so I can use that if I need to. Come on, come on, come on. Hot dice, hot dice, hot dice. Let's go. Um, uh, do we have, hmm. I'm going to close call one of these dice. I'm going to take the blank one here, and I'm going to roll it. Ah, beautiful. Success. Okay, so we'll just leave it like that. That actually worked out. Woohoo. Anyway, so I lost one from that. This will go down, but now I have three dice. And then right here, I'm going to go ahead and search. So I'll use three dice to search the welcome center. Got a third dice right here. Let's go ahead and shake, shake, shake it up. All right, so we got a success, and I could possibly make a double success. No, no, I'm not going to do I'm just going to take the pepper spray, just because I don't want to waste anything right now, and I'd like to start walking. So we'll hold on to the pepper spray. That's going to be one of our items in our hand. The killer's in your space. You may discard this immediately to end the killer phase. Uh, it's going to be a little bit before he gets over to me, but at least I have it just in case. Let's go ahead and walk and maybe get ourselves up to the burial grounds here and get this person out of there. We do have three dice, so better chance for us to be able to do it, right? There it is. That's beautiful. Two successes. Uh, speaking of which, I forgot the time. So it's one for the search, one for the walk, and then one, two right here. And then all I have left is an atonement, so I'm not going to go ahead and do anything else. Uh, end of action phase. Right, these all come back to me, and I only have two to spend this time. So we're just going to take this sprint and uh, go from there. I actually forgot to put this sprint back here from last time. So uh, there would have been uh, two sprints here for me to buy, but I'm only buying one. Now I get to put back close call. Now I get to put back search. And then uh, the remaining zeros just chill out right here. All right, killer phase. Back up to six. And Kenyama doesn't do anything. The wrath doesn't go up. Let's go ahead and flip the tarot card to this. Wrath of Blood. Unleash Killer Wrath. Increase Killer Lash equal to the Bloodlust level. Okay, all right, so here we go. Unleash Killer Wrath. Right now the Killer Wrath is at three. It's doing one uh, horror level, so that goes down there. Uh, increase it by the Bloodlust level, which is a level one right now. Uh, I'm sorry, no, which is level two, right? Nope, nope, level one, level one, this is the bloodless gauge. Ha, sorry, this is the terror gauge, that, or horror gauge, or whatever you want to call it, terror horror. This is the bloodless. it's at level one right now, because it's at the very bottom, so this only goes up by one, which still sucks, but whatever. And then Inkanyamba is going to move into here, see everyone kind of gathering around these holy groves, desecrating them, doing their teenage crazy things, as we can assume, and then he's going to go in and slice up one of these victims, Good and dead. So this will come off here. Boof, this goes up. And then unfortunately, this now triggers. Increase the Divine Wrath by the number of victims at Sacred Spaces, which is three. One, two, three. So one, two, three. This is now a gauge of six. And I'm probably going to have to put that down next turn. That's been resolved. We go now to the panic phase, everyone. We get to go ahead and scare off these two people because they're in the killer's phase and uh, space and someone died. All right, so I'm just going to roll the two dice for the two of them. So we got a six and a four. Man, I wish I had gotten something something better. Uh, let me see here. There's a four, so you go that way. Oh, wow, they actually both run away successfully. A one and a two, they would have stayed here. That's crazy. All right, well, that's uh, <laughs> they actually ran away. Good for them. Upkeep phase, nothing. Back to the action phase. All right, so the good thing is, is I can actually take this one and this one and get them out here. If I roll a sprint and just get a basic success, I can go one, two, or I'm sorry, I go one, two, and they can both run away. Now, I don't like these six victims still here, 
But uh, so far, they have just been kind of just chilling. Maybe it's lunchtime or something, and I'm saving people while they're having their sandwiches. I don't know. That sounds interesting to me. So if I can get rid of these two, that's good. And then I can maybe get over to the groundskeeper shed and possibly grab that whip because I can put another, uh, use it in my other hand. So let's go ahead and sprint. Unfortunately, I can only use two dice this time because of my terror gauge is down here. But, uh, and I don't have anything to uh, focus or whatever, but at least it's something. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, double success. Yes, that's great. All right, so I get a sprint. I'm not going to waste my three movements. So I'm going to move down to one. I'm going to take one of these guys for two, and I'm going to take both of them out of there for three. So that's one victim less in the center area, and nobody in two, uh, all three sacred grounds, actually. So now if I walk, all I need is a basic success to take two guys over here, and then I can come back and grab the other dude and go here and actually activate Adeline's special ability uh, really quickly. Ad Adelaide? Adelaide. Adelaide. I'm so sorry. Pronunciation is bad for me. I apologize. Any of you, walk away. Walk, walk it out. Walk it out. We got this. We got this. All right. So let's go ahead and roll that up. Here we go. Here we go. We just need one success. One success. And even if I get a card, I'll be okay. Uh, sweet. Okay. Beautiful. One success. Just one move. That's all we need. So we move those two people there, and we save two more victims. Yeah. Ooh, get out of here, you crazy people, you. So I'm definitely putting it here in order to be able to get my three dice back. And obviously, I'm going to be taking one of these twos as well. I would have spent the two time in order to do the sprint and the walk, but now I am back at six time, which is great. And we only need one more in order to be able to flip this over. And being that I have three, I'm going to go ahead and do the atonement. Why don't we go ahead and give that a shot? So we'll have three dice in order to roll this up and then possibly decrease the divine wrath and uh, keep that a little bit more in check. Because uh, this would have gone up. I'm back at six. And unless I completely failed, none of this cost me time. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. I got one whole success. Uh, at least it's better than a fail. Oof, the divine wrath would be four time if I... Get it, but I'm going to lower the Divine Wrath by one. Uh, wish I got two at least, then I could have lowered it by three, but that's all right. All right, planning phase we go. We do have six in order to use, so all of this comes back to my hand. I'm going to go ahead and grab the Sprint to try to save a few more people for two. I'm going to grab a Search for another two, and then for my last two, I'm going to grab this Atonement again to hopefully lower the gauge a little bit more. And that's there, one single zero and a sprint. So it's a lot in my hand for my next turn, not a lot for the turn after unless something crazy happens. So, all right, killer phase. Again, killer wrath would go up, it's not going up. Ink and Yamba would just kind of slash away, nothing is happening. So let's go ahead and draw a terror card. Yeah, let me just carve my initials right. You idiots, get stop that. All right, so increase terror or divine wrath uh, by victims in, oh, there's zero, there's none, so it doesn't go up. However, it does unleash, which means I lose four time right here, right now. So I begin this phase with only two time. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, place two new victims in the sacred shrine and all victims adjacent move there. Oh, no. So this is here. This goes here. And now they have decided to actually move on over. So there are, I know, I know that there's a thingy. To, to like say X amount of victims in a particular area, but we're just gonna smoosh them all up in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight victims sitting here in the sacred shrine. I might need to run this way as soon as I can. There's one, two, three, and then just see if I can get them out of here. Oh no. Somehow, some way, Inkanyama is just not moving, but that's kind of what he does. He sits and he waits and he buys his time until all of this is insane. And then he just goes in and goes for the kill. So why don't we go ahead and I do have three dice, which is great. Um, I do have, uh, let's just, let's just do it. We're going to, we're going to sprint, uh, sprint first and then walk. Yeah, that's what we can do. Saving people is the name of the game. We got one success out of the three. Um, uh, you know what? I'll take it. I'll be fine. We can do with it. All right, one, two, and I am going to do that. I thought about just going one, two and rescuing that guy in order to flip her card over, but I'm going to wait on that. I'm actually going to come over here and try to get rid of as many of these victims as possible. 
And with three dice, a walk would be very nice to just go one, two, and take some more people out of there. Get back in there. Which unfortunately also, come back here, is um, <laughs> is the old, is our last move we have to do for this round because we only have two time to work with. All right. So that's that. I'm going to take my short rest and my weak attack will turn this into a success in order to be able to walk two spaces. So that's actually zero time right there. We're completely done. We're going to go one, two over here. We're going to take a victim with us because we only take two at a time and try to shrink that down a little bit. Fortunately, that is all we can do. And due to us having absolutely no time to spend, I do get a walk, so I get to move around a bit. But that means a lot of this goes back. My sprint goes back, and then my two uh, burn cards at this point. So we have one walk to do something next turn. Killer phase, yada, yada, yada. We know all this. Here we go. Terra card flip. Uh, he's coming, and there's nothing we can do about it. So the horror gauge goes up by one, and then he moves to the closest victim and kills them. So back to two dice. I'm definitely going to be focusing next turn. And we'll move Enkanyamba up here, because I think this is the guy he originally I said he wanted to kill, and charges at him full fury and just <laughs> kills him dead. He's only killed two people so far. Then again, that's... Everyone knock on wood. Just knock on wood. That was a dumb thing to say. No, no, he's fine. We're fine. Gods listen to me. Gods listen to me. All right. No panic. No upkeep. We're good. We're good. We're good. Let's just go ahead and do an immediate focus in order to try to gain back that dice. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, double success. Yes. Oh, that's great. Okay. So you're up at six. You'll go to one. I gained two time instead of losing it, so that makes up for the four I lost before, and now I get to roll three dice. Fantastic. To which case, we are going to walk. So even if I only move one space, I have a search card, so I will research the, the, uh, the welcome center when I get there. But if I get a double success, those two guys are being rescued. All right, so we got our three dice. Let's see what we got. Um, all right, so we got, we got one star. So we'll spend the time, and we'll move up one to the welcome center. And then I'm going to immediately just search uh, that space in order to see what I can find. And that's where I'm going to end it. So I'll just spend the time now. Let's roll and see what I can get. I don't know what that top item is, but hey, well, I guess we're going to find out right now. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Ooh, a trash can lid. That's a great defense thing. Uh, excuse me. I uh, take out the trash. <laughs> get it? I get it. All right, so what's great is the trash can lid goes into my second part of my hand, and I have a lot of damage reduction uh, abilities here. So worst case scenario near the end, I can search for items and hopefully have what I can in order to take out Inkanyamba. In any event, I'm going to end this right here. Let's head on over to the planning phase. With six to purchase, I'm going to obviously take all of my zeros back, and I am definitely going to take... One, two sprints to try to get as many people out of there as possible, and I will take the other search. So that is six right there, and we'll put back the search, and we'll put back the walk and the focus for next turn. All right, killer phase. Here we go. Depending on how this goes, hopefully we'll be able to keep uh, keep keep going here. So we, we spent our six, we went back up to six, and Kenyama doesn't do anything. His gauge is fine or whatever. Next terror card is... If I don't, I don't know how, but I've angered him. He's focusing on me. He moves and attacks. Increase the uh, killer wrath gave equal to the amount of damage inflicted. Now, he's only focusing on me. So it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Actually, he would go up. He would. He wouldn't go down. One, two, three, four. No, five that way. One, two, three four, five, either way. So he's not focusing on victims. So I think if he passes a, a an area with victims, he would not attack. But I'm going to have him do this. One, two, three. So now he's in the burial grounds. He's closer to me. He's on that side. Um, and I'm just going to be rescuing people as much as possible. I still think that if I went this way, it, would, it wouldn't matter because he's still closer. Well, he's further away at that point. So maybe he would go up this way. In either event, he wouldn't stop here because he's focusing on me, not victims. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, but that's how I interpret that. With that said, panic upkeep is done. Action phase back to here. Let's start rescuing some people. 
Straight up, sprint, sprint, sprint to the exit and back. Here we go. One, two, three, a single. Do I want to just take it right now? I have a short rest and a weak attack. Um, I could do that in order to get three movement, but I may screw myself over later. Should I just take what I have? You know, I'm just going to take what I have. That's fine. So I spent that. We do one. Everyone Yay! gets rescued. And before I do anything else, hooray to the final victim being rescued right here. We are able to gain our two times. So now we're at seven. And that means all of these people come off of the card. And we finally, I think the first time I've ever had this on recording, flip to her powerful ability. Unfortunately, this is a choose one of the following to immediately uh, activate. Decrease one of the rat types to one, recover all uh, health, or take up to six action, uh, six cards worth of actions to your hand. I may just do that final thing, bring six points worth of action cards to my hand, and because uh, the rats are really not that bad. In addition to that, I've saved another victim, so my horror gauge goes down by one. That is amazing. I could just go right for the critical blow. I don't know if I'm ready to fight him yet because I don't have any like actual weapons. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a search for two. I have six in order to spend. I'm going to take an improvise for the future to try to plan out something better and then a close call. So there's my six going to my hand. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten exactly, exactly ten cards. So now that I've done all that, I do get my second move. So I'm back here to the welcome center. And I think before I do anything else, I am just going to go ahead and search it one more time and see what I can find. Maybe I'll get something good. Maybe uh, maybe I'll know exactly what's in there then. Uh, see? See? Good thing I didn't. Good thing I didn't uh, get rid of those cards. So weak attack and short rest will both go away like so. This will go down one for the search. And I'll be able to take the top card, which is a tribal mask. Whenever you receive ja damage... Choose Divine or Killer Rask and... Re and blah. Whenever you receive damage, choose Divine or Killer Wrath and decrease by the amount of damage received. Cool. This is a passive item, so that'll just go into my backpack and that'll help keep the Divine Wrath down should Inkanyamba come and start trying to kill me. All right, we got to get those people out of there. So we're going to go ahead and just do one more sprint. All right, come on. Come on, give me something good. Give me something good. All right, so I got one success, so I get to move two. So yeah, we're going to go one two into the crowd of people and then we're immediately going to walk and try to get some of them out of there again this would be wonderful if i can get a double success but we'll see what happens hey i got a double success sweet all right come on everybody well i'll take two of you at least so you are there so that's one and two so we'll go here just to try to get them out of the groves and out of those secret areas and then hopefully closer to here and it was also two time that I spent for uh, the sprint and the walk. So now I'm down to four. I actually forgot to move this up one. So I am right here at the zero point. So now if I rescue victims, this would go up one and then I would immediately gain a time. So the more victims I rescue, the more time I'll even have to spend on other things. Okay, stopping that right there. We're going to take these cards. Oh, actually, we're going to go over to the planning phase first, buy some stuff with our four time, and then we're going to uh, figure out uh, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't go too, too crazy at this point. He's probably pissed that I'm rescuing all these people. Okay, so let's grab our zeros. Four time, and I have seven cards in my hand. I am going to actually grab this Furious Strike right here, again, just to kind of prepare for the future, uh, so I have stuff to fight back with him. I'm going to try to get to that Groundkeeper's Shed in order to gain the weapon, or start searching Lost and Found. Maybe there's a cool weapon there. Search to Sprints. And a short rest. Outstanding. Inkanyamba does nothing because he's just kind of chilling there. Let's go ahead and flip our... I, we haven't even hit his dark... Oh, God, this is going to get really bad really fast. Dark uh, terror card. Here we go. Hushka! Fury of the Gods. So it's an event. Increase uh, the Divine Wrath by the number of victims and spaces. Unleash the Wrath and increase it again. All right, so let's do the event first. So the tour guide is gone. So that actually, I can just kind of discard that. And now here we go. One, two, three. Flash photography. Point that camera somewhere else, you paparazzi uh, wannabe. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't read that from here. Whenever at least one victim in your space panics, discard one random action card. So a victim has to panic in my space for that to trigger. That's fine. However, I have to increase the gauge 
by the number of victims in uh, sacred spaces. It's one, two, three, four, five. So I already have four. Or no, no, it's at five. I'm sorry, it's at five. So now I'm at ten. And then I unleash my wrath, which is discard all action cards except the atonement cards and increase and decrease. The, oh, are you kidding? Are you kidding? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And my eighth card is atonement. So this goes down by seven. So now it's back to three. But all of my cards that I was going to use for my turn, bye bye and then increase it by the number of victims in the spaces, which is one, two, three, four, five. Oh, are you kidding? And it's already back up so high. That stinks. Oh man, all right, well all I'm gonna do is play my atonement card just because I have it and uh, might as well because I, I can then uh, decrease the divine wrath and hopefully not suffer too much from it. Yeah, come on, I have three dice. Let's see what we can do. Uh, all right, one success, which is lowering something by one. All right, I'm just going to lower the Divine Wrath by one. Uh, it's the least thing between the two. And his Killer Wrath hasn't really activated too much, though I feel like it's coming really quickly. Uh, this, oh, man, I can't believe it. Oh, darn it. Oh, and I still have six, because I didn't lose any time. And that was a short action phase. Well, I get all these back, and now I have six to play with. Let's just, let's just two, four and uh, six for the search. We're going to do a lot of moving this turn in order to try to get as many people out of there as possible. Unless something really bad happens, of course. Uh, why did I put that up there? You're not a zero. You're a two. There we are. Oh, boy. Here we go. Let's, let's see what the killer does. Well, he himself does nothing because there's nobody here, but the terror gauge will probably be really bad. All right. Taurus trap. All victims adjacent to sacred spaces move there. Bye. Ugh. Increase the Divine Wrath by the number of victims in spaces. It's just going to go all the way up to the top, which is terrible. And then Inkanyamba moves and attacks uh, victims. So he's going to go one, two, three, right into the center here, as I figure he would. He actually could have even went one, two. It doesn't really matter. Whatever the shortest distance was, he's still going to do one damage. And uh, that victim. Oh you're, you're, you're the unlucky soul that goes dead. Oh, no. Oh, no. So with you dead, this goes up by one. First thing we're going to do is we're going to reveal the dark power. Let's see what we got here. Oh, no. Oh, okay, so. Uh, Violet Temper, at the end of the upkeep phase, make a horror roll. Uh, if there's a star, no effect. If there is no stars, then unleash your killer wrath, which is terrible. So now i got to keep in mind something for the upkeep. Also... Uh, Divine Wrath Unleashes, which again is at 10, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cards gone, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, down to 1. Oh, man. And now I have nothing to do on my turn. Furthermore, we have four victims here that are going to go ahead and panic, so let's go ahead and just see where these meat bags run off to. Two fives and two fours. All right, so let's see, two fours and two fives. All right, at least they're out of the uh, Sacred Shrine right now, which is fine. These two are also closer to me, which is even better. Uh, but I can't do anything this turn, so we're just going to go right in from action phase. Oh, no, I have to make my horror roll. Hold on one second. All right, so I get to roll three dice, and if I get at least one star, which I did, then nothing happens. Good. Anyway, action phase has already been completed because I have no cards. So we're going to take all of these and then once again do two, four, six. Back to the hand I was uh, before all that craziness happened. <laughs> Kenyama does nothing and the next terror card. Okay, he's coming and there's nothing we can do. Uh, so this is going to, terror cage is going to go up by one. He's going to target the closest victim and slash and dash. So we'll move this here. We'll move you here. And we'll say, yeah, yeah, he's just wild man here running in and just slashing his way through all these meat bags. All right, so by doing that, another victim here. This goes up by one. So now his uh, power's at two and his movement's at three. Increase the uh, divine wrath by the number of victims in sacred spaces, which is three. So we'll go one, two, three. That's fine. All right, so that's good. That's good. Killer phase. 
Uh, we drew that card, so now we have whoosh, the panic phase. We got one guy here. He goes to whatever spot number five is. It's <laughs> just right back to the sacred shrine. Yeah, you just keep ping-ponging back and forth there, my friend. Try to stay alive. But now we got to roll our upkeep, and we got a star. That's fine, so nothing happens. Wish I got this on a regular thing, but now it is our turn once again. Sprint away, sprint away. I want to try to get three movement here uh, as best as I can get, just so I can get these guys out of here. Um, oh no, I'm doing it. Short west, walk, focus, focus. So I'm going to go ahead and throw both of those down to do success, success, and be able to move three. And by that, I'm going to go one, two, three, and then that's two more victims. Yay! Yay! Save from the ter terror that is in Kenyamba. So the sprint cost me one. Each victim would have raised this up one, so that'll raise here, and then it would raise one more. It wouldn't go anywhere, and I would gain my time back. Fantastic. Let us sprint once more and see if we can get more spaces moved. Come on. Have something be a success. Ugh, not a... Oh, no. I'm going to toss my search and my weak attack just to turn this into one success, so this way I can at least go one, two. That'll go down by one, and then I can walk once. And then hopefully either get one, uh, one, two out. Actually, that's, that would be my best way to go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, uh, yes, 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 sweet. So I'll just do that. I'll go one, two, rescue this one right here and not take away my, uh, my time that I used because I would have lost it and then gained it back anyway. I have five to spend. And yes, I know it's crazy the way I did it, but I'm going to go one, two, uh, three, four four, five right here. I'm not going to be able to move anywhere next turn, but at the very least, I can set myself up for a future turn in order to be able to start searching uh, again. I may as well just run up to the groundkeeper's shed and grab that whip. All right, Inkanyamo doesn't do anything. We flip the final terror card. All right, Punishment of the Gods. We unleash Divine Wrath twice, and then uh, Inkanyama does stuff. So, this is discard one random action card. I have three action cards here, so I'm just going to shuffle these up. One, two, that one, and that one. So these are out of my hand, which are Close Call and Atonement. So they are out of my hand right now. They don't go back into the tableau until the end of the next planning phase, or the end of, yeah, the end of the next planning phase, but that's, that's all. I wouldn't be able to do anything anyway. And at least I still have my search card, so that's a big thing too. And I'm going to have Inkanyamba come up here, because this guy is in the sacred shrine, and of course, any victim in a sacred area should attach, uh, like, gain his attention first and foremost. And he's not very happy that they are there. So that's one more dead victim, one point up. And the next time it goes up, the divine wrath is going to unleash, and I really don't want to do that anymore. No victims panic, but I do have to go ahead and roll this. Oh no! Oh no! So that means that his Killer Wrath unleashes, which is the Horror Gauge goes up by one, and he's just going to move into this space with these two victims here and get ready to kill them next turn unless I do something about it. Which unfortunately we know I can't do anything about it because all I have is a search card in my hand. So I am done. On to the planning phase. And take all these back. Again, I have six. Um... I'm just going to take one sprint for two. I'm going to take a uh, search for two. So that's two, four, two more. Um, I'm going to grab, do I grab another sprint? Let's grab another sprint. Let's grab another sprint. Maybe, maybe I can run away uh, to this groundskeeper's shed really quickly, save another victim, and hope for the best. Toman and close call go back. Hooray. I have ten cards in my hand in case anybody is wondering. Anywho, um... <laughs> Somebody is dead here, so uh, one of these two guys go dead like so. Ah. Actually, no. No, I take that back. They do not go dead because I should have revealed the finale card at the uh, upkeep phase. So let's do that now because that's what's going to trigger. So here's how this works. This flips over. Savage Whirlwind. So now he's going to be unleashing the Killer Wrath every turn. He's going to increase his uh, Killer Wrath by one and then he's going to target and attack twice. In addition to that, this little piece slaps right here, so now the 
Divine Wrath will also trigger every turn, and uh, that will increase by one as well. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Okay, so here we go. Uh, trigger, that goes down. He would move towards the closest victim or uh, final girl. He did, uh, he already moved, so he's not going anywhere. And this goes up by one. And now his main effect happens, which he targets closest victim, final girl, moves to them, and attacks twice. So each attack is separate. So each one of these guys is dead. So he just comes in and do a whirlwind slashes, just yeah, you know, swing, swing, and kills both of them immediately. So with both of these gone, these are dead. Uh, this would go up by two. So I'm actually going to move it up two right now, but the first time this gets unleashed, discard one random action card. All right, let's, let's see what, uh, what I happen to discard. A focus. That's fine. I don't need that. And then this would go up by one. So now this is just going to get worse and worse and worse each turn. All right, so with no more victims on the board, I am stuck at two dice. So I can just take away one of those dice there. Um, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I am going to, if I stay a far away from him, he is just going to go ahead and just beat me down more. So I'm going to go ahead and sprint. I'm going to try to get into his spot. You know what? Let's focus first. I do have a focus. I'm going to try to focus first. If I can get, uh, one star, then I can roll three dice. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, I got two of them. Sweet. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So boom up to eight. Excellent. So now I can roll three dice. Let's go ahead and sprint. I'm going to use one of my sprints and I'm going to go ahead and roll three dice and I'm going to try to get into this lost and found spot. It's not going to be easy, but we'll see what we can do. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and do short rest and weak attack. We're going to toss those. We're going to make this a success and I'm going to go one, two, three right into his spot. This may seem stupid, but I'm going to go ahead and search right now, uh, do a double search in the lost and found spot in hopes to find something. So I'm going to take time there and I'm going to search. All right, come on, come on, come on, search away. Let's go, let's go. All right, so I get the top one, but I don't really want that. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to toss my two walks and we're going to make this a success. Ooh, everything's getting all crazy. Uh, so that means I can look, take the top two item cards too. So it's, First aid kit and ceremonial dagger. Whenever you damage the killer, choose uh, divine or killer wrath and decrease it. I'm going to take this and then I'm going to place this on the bottom of the item deck uh, up here just so I don't have to deal with it. So it's going to go in my backpack for right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other search and hope to see what that other item is. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, I, whoa. Oh, man, man, I wish I played an atonement. Oh, man. All right, so, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, what are these items? Prayer book and a map. Uh, prayer book, when you play an atonement, add one star to your roll. So it's always going to give me one star. Discard this during your action phase, and then for each item deck card, do the following. If it's face down, flip it face up. If it's face up, discard it. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to take the prayer book. I'm going to take the prayer book and we're going to move that over here. Right here. And well, how many moves did I do? Hold on one second. Let me, let me look at this. Okay. I think I'm at five, five time. Let me know if I, let me know if that's wrong or whatever. I'm pretty sure I'm at five based off of uh, all this. I, I always get very excited at this point and I lose track of uh, my time and everything. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to, get beaten down by the flippin' Ryan Wrath anyway. So, that's gonna be the end of the action phase. There's nothing else I can do. I do have five in order to uh, fight with. So here we go. So, one, two, three, four for Furious Strike, and one for Close Call. And then, search, search, sprint. Uh, search, search, sprint. Where's my other sprint? I know it's in there, right? Oh no, it's in my hand. Right, right, one, two, three, three, three. And then all those go there. Okay. I know I can discard cards for time. Um, do I want to actually discard that sprint? Actually, yeah. I'm going to take the close call. I'm going to say that I discarded the sprint so I had two time. And I'm going to take an atonement just so I can lower the gauges down more. Okay. Here we go. 
This goes back up. It's the killer's phase. If the killer is in your space, you may discard this imme to immediately end the killer phase. Ignore their remaining movement, attack, and any effects. Using the pepper spray immediately right now, nothing else activates, which is fantastic. Also, panic phase, whatever, upkeep phase is here. I've been forgetting the roll, the violent, violent temper. Um, let me move my ceremony dagger up, move this over, and then let me roll uh, for the violent temper. I think I forgot the roll from the last turn. So this is from the last turn. All right, I got one star. So nothing would have happened. And now on this turn, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. okay, cool. Also nothing happens. All right, so that's good. So that should retroactively uh, correct that. All right, back to the action phase. First, I'm going to go ahead and use an atonement, and we're going to use one point on the prayer book. So I always will have one star. So the more stars I have, the better it will be. Come on, something good, something good, something good. Oh, man, oh no. All right, well, I, I know I at least get one star. Uh, I'm going to drop the Killer Wrath down one, just because I really don't want to lose too much of uh, my... Uh, I'm going to lose a dice regardless of anything. Uh, you know what, no, we're going to drop the Divine Wrath down by one, so I discard only one random action card. Oh, man, that stinks. Uh, but in either event, I'm going to go ahead and Furious Strike him. Whenever you damage the Killer, choose to decrease either one of the gauges by one. So... I have three dice. I'm going to try to attack him and hopefully gain my thing back. All right, Furious Strike. Here we go. One, two, three. Um, all right, I got one damage or whatever. All right, so the Ceremonial Dagger does one. The Furious Strike does one. Horror does go down by one, which is great. And then because I use the Ceremonial Dagger, I can decrease the, the Killer or the Divine Wrath by one. I'm going to bring the Killer Wrath down by one. And we're actually going to start chip, chip, chipping away at his health, so that's two down. Awesome. But my turn immediately ends, which is fine. I have no cards right now anyway, so let's go to... And I have six to spend, so that's good. All right, so we get all these, and I'm just going to take the critical blow. So it's worth six, and uh, why not? Because I have plenty of things to defend myself. Put the Furious Strike back and the Atonement back. I should probably have taken the Atonement, but I'll be fine. All right, Killer Phase. Let's go through this. So we're going to do the Divine Wrath first, so... Horror level is going to go up by one. He's going to move to me. That's fine. Nothing else happens. But now this goes up by one. Divine Wrath. Discard one random action card. I swear if it is the critical blow, I am going to be so... Okay, weak attack. Would have rather not have discarded that, but that's fine. And then that goes up by one. Uh, before the Divine Wrath even happens, he does a double attack on me. So he's going to hit me for two. So I'm going to use two points on the trash can lid, uh, which is Fine, so that blocks the first attack, and then the second attack, I'm actually going to take two shots, boom, boom, and use the Tribal Mask to reduce, what do I want to reduce by two? I'm going to reduce, I'm going to reduce this by two right here, uh, just so, like, just, just the terror level that goes up next turn, so that will be fine. And then I've already discarded this, uh, well, I guess I jumped the gun, I'm sorry. I was on five and five, right? No. That was on four and four. He did this, did that, and then he attacked me twice. I blocked for two, and then I took the two damage. So now I can decrease something by two. So I will decrease uh, this by two. One, two. That's fine. Then this activates, discard one card, and then goes up by one. There we are. It, things have to be done in a particular order. Sorry, sorry. Again, I'm getting to that point where I'm just like, I want to do everything. You have to do it in the order because that's how it triggers. Anyway, action phase. Here we go. I don't really have much of anything else. I guess I can focus. I'm going to do one focus just to bring that back up one. I have the three, so it'll keep me... Okay, perfect. That's, that's all I really needed. So that goes down one. This goes up one. That saves me on the killer wrath when that unleashes next turn. Now we're just going to critical blow him. We're going to see what we can do. Hit him again. Hit him again. All right, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Um, do I just want to hit him? Um, get him for another point of damage? Sure. I'm going to toss both walks. We're going to turn that into a success, and we're going to do one, two, three, four damage to him. So that's one, two, three, four damage. Nicely done. And then whenever you damage the killer, choose to decrease one or two by one. I'm going to discard to decrease the divine wrath by one because I don't want to lose my action. I have a short rest and a focus in my hand. 
I'm going to discard both of those to gain two time. And that's going to end uh, this particular uh, action phase. All right, with seven to spend, I'm going to go ahead and take a retaliate for four just to try to hit him as fast as I can. Um, man, I wish I had one more. Oh, dang, I wish I had one more. I'm pretty sure that's how I was all right with all that. But I have three left to spend. Um, I'm going to take... I'm going to take a guard, and I'm going to take a close call just in case. Critical blow goes back. This is what I wish I had my weak attack, but that's all right. Those will go there. That's fine. Okay. Killer phase. One by one. Killer wrath unleashes. So that goes up, and then that goes up. Now he attacks me twice. So he's going to come, and he's going to strike me for two, but I'm going to use my trash can lid to block one of them. So I'm only taking one damage. That's fine. Um, but... I did take a damage, so I can decrease the amount by some. So I'll bring the Divine Wrath down by one. And then he's going to attack me again. Uh, I could retaliate. I'm actually not going to do anything. I'm going to take the two damage, because now I get another dice, because I'm at the final points of my health, and because I took two damage, I'm going to bring the Divine Wrath all the way down to here. Okay, that's what we're doing. So now the Divine Wrath triggers, I lose a time, so I'd be at 5 instead of 6, and then this increases by 1. Perfect. This Trash Can Lid goes away as well. Alright, now as far as my phase goes, I have uh, these cards right here. I'm going to actually toss Close Call to gain uh, a time. So now I have 6, and I'm going to go right to... Oh, let me let me roll the, uh, the Horror Roll. Hold on. I actually get 4 this time, which is great. And I got 1... I got two stars. Okay, that's fine. So uh, that that's good. That saves that then. So now I have six to spend here, and I'm just going to take the critical blow because I have a guard and the retaliate, which will take care of both of his attacks this turn, hopefully, and then I can critical blow him and hopefully win. Guys, this is nerve-wracking. All right, so Unleash Killer Wrath. This does go up by one, so I'm back down to three dice, but that's okay. He's where I am, that's fine, that goes up by one. He's now going to attack twice. First, I'm going to use my guard, and we're going to roll three dice and try to block that two damage. One star should be enough to block it. I got two stars, which doesn't really matter, but that's okay. Now he's going to attack again. We're going to retaliate. Again, one star should be enough, but we'll see how it goes. So let's go here. Come on, come on, come on. All right, I got one star out of that. So I can reduce the damage by two. So I take nothing. One strike and one strike here, which is great. And I can reduce uh, the uh, uh, one of the gauges by one. So it's two damage to him. Pop, pop. Oh, he's down to the last one. Oh, he's down to the last one. Did I forget to bring these back to my hand? I think I did because I spent the six for here. But nothing else went here. So these should actually all be in my hand as well. I'm sure you guys will tell me one way or another if that was right or whatnot. Again, I'm right at the end here. And I'm very excited by the way all this is going. Because I may actually beat this jerk. So here we go. Uh, we, did the we did the killer phase. He is done. Uh, we do the divine wrath. So I lose two times. So I'm at four. This then goes up by one. Uh, panic phase. Upkeep phase. Let's do the roll. I get two dice plus two because we're both on our final leg. There's stars, so his his uh, Divine Wrath doesn't unleash. That's great. Okay, weak attack. I know it seems weird to do a weak attack right in here, but I only need to do one damage to him to flip this over to see if he's dead or not. And I'd rather do that and save my critical blow for my last shot because no matter how much damage you do to him, it's always going to be, you know, whatever this is. It's only going to be one. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so we did... I got three stars, which is great. So that's a guaranteed one damage to him. I kind of killed myself here too, by the way. But that's a, that's, that's a risk I was willing to take. Did we kill him? Did we kill him? Did we kill him? Yes! 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 Oh my gosh, we beat him! We beat Inkanyama! Finally! You have survived as the final girl. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Finally, I get not only a win against Inkanyamba, but also a win for you guys on camera. That is absolutely fantastic. I am so happy that I was able to do that. And, you know, it's just finally, like, 
you need mediocre dice rolls in this in order to be able to do stuff. At least getting one star a turn, one success, really adds up over the time to be able to do what you need to do and to get done the various actions that need to be done. I also got pretty lucky in terms of like getting all of the characters out of there and finding uh, the items that I need. By the way, her special weapon was that last spot in the, um, what was it? Oh, I'm not dead. Uh, the Welcome Center. I had to look that up really quickly in order to figure out what it was because it was the very first place we searched and I went through that a bunch of times and of course, of course, the last card that I should have looked at was her special weapon, her bat and her uh, shield, which again, by the way, would have been amazing. Whenever you roll at least one star with the guard reaction, you do one damage to the enemy. So regardless, her bat and her uh, shield would basically act as a retaliate as well, doing at least one damage. And again, in Kenyaba, that would have been wonderful to have because I would have just bought two guards and dodge, dodge, smack, bam. So what is it? What is it? Um, I call this wham and this bam. So wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Would have made it easier. In any event, I did it. We did it. We have saved the Sacred Groves and at least a handful. We've saved a lot of people this round. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Take care of yourselves and each other. We are family forever. Gaming together. I cannot wait to get Series 2. It actually should be here this day uh, that I'm recording this, which is actually a few, several days in the future, or much longer than that for you. So expect me to like maybe show something off from that in the future as well. Uh, I want to beat the, or at least play, the fifth uh, feature film from series one and the vignette really quickly before I go into series two. But at least with series two as well, you can expect me to do my final lore, uh, my killer lore readings as well, because I really like doing that for series one. And I'm going to do that again for series two. So thank you guys again. Let me know all your comments down below. Take care of yourselves and each other. We're family forever gaming together. Even if I've said that already, it doesn't matter. It's true. You guys are amazing. Stay awesome. And I will see you in the next one. I'm just really excited I won. Guys, have a good one. Later.